Hello and good day. I'm your host, Rich Frawley. I appreciate, I appreciate you joining me today, and I hope by the end of this webinar, you'll share my enthusiasm for how Triage G2 can help you with all your site exploitation needs. I've been with ADF for nearly four years after my 22 year career in law enforcement. And during my career, I had the opportunity to perform forensic examinations, investigate digital crimes, and collect intelligence. In my years as an investigator, I worked a variety of cases, fraud, homicide, threats. So being prepared when going out and gathering information is something that's near and dear to my heart. As a company, ADF has been around for well over 10 years with its technological foundations rooted in forensic triage. Our early years were spent creating software specifically for image identification and analysis for child exploitation, with government agencies and law enforcement being the main drivers asking for this technology. Our immediate value as a triage tool was in providing immediate on-scene intelligence and capture of potential evidentiary information and has since morphed into solutions that are easier to use for investigators and helping re reduce case backlog. What has transpired over the years has been an evolution of our technology to not merely include support for hundreds of file types and artifacts, but a better way to link all that information quicker than any other solution on the market. The theme has remained consistent in our mission statement, help investigators and examiners get to the relevant information faster. So today's webinar is going to assist you in understanding Triage G2 a little better and giving you the confidence that you're getting what you asked for. This is just an example of our client base, our ecosystem, if you will. But I believe that this tells a powerful story about the types of agencies and organizations that rely on ADF. Not only does this illustrate our global reach, but there are some serious organizations listed here that span across both the public and private sectors. At ADF, we work closely with our customers to solicit feedback and understand specific use cases. We seek to design products to help you get your job done faster and more effectively. We design our user interface based on Microsoft Fluent Framework. We combine ease of use with the ability to be highly configurable. Automated process flow helps you identify critical evidence fast and eliminates unnecessary time and that noise in your case, if you will. And it doesn't matter how you deploy any of the ADF tools, boot mode, live, desktop, and even in our standalone viewer, the interface is the same and there is no learning curve between the multiple ways to use our tool. ADF was among the first forensic software companies to combine files, artifacts, and user artifacts into a single timeline view. All of this information is combined into a comprehensive timeline, which can be customized with many powerful filters. We give our users time-based configurability, meaning we can customize our profiles to give you a quick general profile, a low hanging fruit, early case assessment, or an intermediate scan, which will gather artifacts and files that will target exactly what you're looking for and allow you to continue with your investigation as soon as that scan is complete. Or we can go with that thorough scan that will pull everything from everywhere and do a comprehensive analysis of the data retrieved. All of this can be shared with our standalone viewer. The viewer is the fully functional analysis portion of our tool placed onto a device, a USB device, your desktop that can be shared with other investigators, prosecutors, um, and it's fully functional. You can tag, sort, filter, report, and no license is required. 
Also great for putting the case to bed, for archiving. You could put it away, take it out three years from now, open it up just like the day it was put away in the same version it was scanned in, and there's no need to worry about backwards compatibility. And all this starts with our search profiles. As you can see here, we give you pre-configured search profiles and the ability to customize to suit your specific task. So today we're going to be going over Triage G2. You may hear me refer to it as TG2, uh, Media Exploitation, Entity Extraction, Multilingual Translation. Uh, over 230 plus languages, you will see that Rosoka add-on uh, towards the end of the demo today. We're going to go over that. It's a great uh, tool. Um, just a little bit about our tools before we move on. We have uh, the four tools that you see here. Today's Triage G2 or TG2, MDI, Mobile Device Investigator, DEI, Digital Evidence Investigator, TINV, triage investigator. But what you're going to be looking at today with TG2 is our pro bundle, TG2 Pro, which adds the MDI mobile device investigator capability to triage G2. So with any of our tools, when you bundle MDI in with it, it becomes the pro version. And the process. So let me run over this really quick, uh, and then I promise we'll get into our demo. So little visual here before you use the tool. On the mobile side, um, we can scan uh, iOS and Android devices. It would be logical. You have to have access to the phone. You would get the, prepare the phone, get the password, open it up, airplane mode stay awake, debugging if needed, all these little steps we give you in a chart. Um, the, the tool also guides you through this process, but you would take it, connect it to the computer, do the uh, advanced logical backup and scan. And you can do that in one process, backup and scan all in one, or you can do a backup and then scan with your customized profiles for what you are actually looking for. Scanning your digital devices, so your hard drives uh, that are removed from computers, um, your drive images, so your forensic images, EO1, DDs, your thumb drives, your SD cards, micro SD cards. Um, you could point it to a folder, but this would be from your desktop, connect it through your write blocker, and then do your scan that way from your laptop. If you want to go out into the field, which I think most will be using this tool for as well, you have the ruggedized uh, Corsair USB device here. Um, it's a SSD drive. So you would use your desktop version to create your profiles or use the out of the box profiles and then prepare this USB device, which we call the collection key. And it would be prepared to boot either Windows, Lacquer, uh, Windows, Mac, or Linux. And you could plug it into the power off computer and uh, power it up and boot to our USB device and scan that computer 100% forensically sound. Or you can use it to scan a powered on live Windows machine. Uh, you would be able to collect the RAM uh, image and scan as well. And if I didn't manage, mention it with the boot scan, you would also have the ability to image that. And both you can analyze from the key on scene if needed. So with that, let me exit out here and change over to our tool. So now everybody should be able to see uh, Triage G2 Pro up in the window. You see it here. You'll see the version down the bottom. We're uh, demonstrating version five, TG2 Pro. All right, so you can see the interface nice and clean. 
You can scan devices and images. This is where we go, like I said, if you're going to use it in this desktop mode or laptop mode, I would come in to scan devices and images. You will be able to see everything that I have connected to my computer. So if I had connected, uh, let's say this Apollo uh, is the external drive that I want to scan, you'd be able to see it here and select that. Select our search profiles. Search profiles are artifact captures and file captures, which we will go over. Um, parses out all the artifacts you typically want in every uh, investigation and pulls all the files or specific files that you are looking for. And then you would scan and you can add fields over here. We'll get into that in a minute. Here's where you would prepare that collection key to go out into the field. Here's where you do your imaging. Over here is reviewing scan results. So if I have any previous scans, I could come into here and see my results. I'll just step in here really quick. So here's a scan results summary page. You can see we had some, uh, it took five and a half minutes to collect 2,300 files and parse out all the artifacts. It did some auto tagging in the background. Um, so some analysis was done while this was going on and we're gonna explain all that as we move along. And then we have our setup scans. Um, that's where we would go to prepare these, these search profiles and then our settings and our user guide. So just to give you an idea how this works, starting from scratch, what I'm going to do is point this to a partition. And I'm just going to run a quick G2 profile. So this is a very quick uh, artifacts and um, browsing history and files from the browser cache give you a general profile of how this computer is being used but give it to you uh, quick i'm going to come in here and change my name just give it demo one you can see once i have my item selected my profile selected and i've given it a name i can now scan <clears throat> so what happens here the first thing our tool does is it goes through and makes a listing of every file and folder that's on that partition, regardless of whether we're gonna collect it or not. The second thing our tool does is goes through and parses out the artifacts, which you can see it's already doing that now. Application usage, installed applications, user logins, uh, USB history. So I already have this information and I can go into view results and view this. At the same, same time, some keyword searches are being run. You can see here, I already have 11 hits under my anti-forensic traces. Um, so there's a lot being done in the background, super fast uh, profiling this computer. Uh, now it's going in, parsing out browsing history, browser cache, download history, search terms. So you can see with all the information that we're collecting here, I would get a, a pretty good idea of um, how this computer was being used and what the uh, user may have been doing. If you combine this with some customized keywords and hash sets possibly, uh, you could see where it really can zone in and get you exactly what you're looking for. Up on top, we have this matches pane. You can see that it's hit some keyword hits over on the side here, and then it's actually collecting some of the files that have had those keywords used in it. So this was just to give you a general idea. Like I said, I can go in and view the results here. Um, my summary page, it ran for a minute and 30 seconds. Uh, it's only gotten to the point of collecting one file, but all my artifacts are already parsed out. If I was on site and, uh, you know, within it was even less than the minute and a half that I'm looking at here, but I have the listing of all the USB devices that were attached to this computer or that Windows had registered. Um, so it gives me a good idea what to be looking for when I'm on this site. So within a minute, I have this list, hey, I'll be doing this, everybody else start looking for this information or these items, because um, I don't see them sitting here attached to the computer right now. And it gives you that heads up. Maybe if you're doing an interrogation, um, there's some information, user data, um, so on and so forth that you can use. You can see it's updating here. 
uh, because my scan is now completed. Uh, so I was in there view viewing, it completed, I hit OK. Two minutes and 19 seconds, this was a typical user partition. Uh, it collected 793 files and all those artifacts. So let me move on from here and show you how we can really go from that, you know, gathering a lot of information to um, really zeroing in on what we're looking for and putting it all together. So what would that workflow look like? I know we're going out on scene. We got site exploitation to do. We know we're gonna come across some devices. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure I'm taking out into the field or putting on this USB device what I need, what's important to me. So we can uh, prepare a collection key to go out in the field, but first we need to work on our search profile. What do I want to take out? Now, I just ran the quick G2. You can see how that works. When you're looking for that quick, down and dirty, how is this computer used, what's on it, uh, let me see what else I need to run. So in two minutes, I can say, okay, I ran that. Let me run the customized one against it because I think I, this is the right computer. Or you bring out a quick and intermediate, depending on the different tools that you're going to be coming across. So this is our search library. I come in to set up scans. This is where all my search profiles are. And I want to go out, I have some information. I have some devices that we've already looked in that had intelligence or I have, an intel I have intelligence from somebody else. And I wanna see if the devices I come across today has that intelligence as well. Is there, is there a, a match? Is there coordination between these two? Uh, have they connected to the same IP address? Do, are they sharing files? So maybe I want to say, okay, it's going to be fast. I don't have a lot of time on scene. I don't know how much time I'm going to have, but I know it's not a lot. So I'm going to start with an intermediate. So this is one that should take anywhere, you know, from that five minutes to 10 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, it could take longer if you're running a lot of hash sets, a lot of keywords, um, but typically it's going to give you a lot of information. So I was able to copy that. And then what we do is we give you our categories. So applications, child exploitation, communication, device data. If I click on the category, you can see the captures that are selected to run. Anti-forensic traces, application usage, installed applications, remote access. If I go down to communications, it's gonna collect calls from all these different apps. Now you don't need to know what exactly these apps are just by looking at them. You can expand that and it's you can see it's Skype, text me, WeChat, WhatsApp. So. Um, those are all the apps that are supported. Here's the email that's supported. If you look at this, it'll pull out from uh, Outlook, Windows Mail, Windows Live Mail, Apple Mail, Yahoo Mail, uh, messaging, save contacts, and then Skype, device data, connection log, device information, operating system information, USB history. So let me just stop here. I, I said earlier, artifact captures and file captures. Artifact captures parse out specific information or records from specific files. So my connection log, you know, it may go into, uh, it may go into a file, pull out all the records and list it for you. Device information, same. Um, they'll go in, grab the information of the device. Operating system information, pulls a lot of information from the registry, puts it into a table for you to view very nicely, automated. So artifact captures go in, they're denoted by the icons and they pull out the records and put them together for you. File captures are exactly that. They go in and they collect files. So in this one under device data, you can see I want the re Windows registry files um, for further analysis. We're gonna pull some information out of it here for you, but I also wanna take them with me um, so we can really uh, deep dive into those later. So that's the difference between an artifact capture and a file capture. Documents, these are file captures, no icons, it's going in collecting documents. Keywords, so these are file captures as well because it's using keywords to pull specific files out for you. Uh, if it has a keyword in it, it will pull it. Um, multimedia, here's where you collect all your, your pictures and videos and audio and then uh, user data and web browsing history. 
So explain what's in this search profile. I have some information that I want to take out onto scene with me. So we allow you to create captures too. I can collect files, specific files from the entire drive. So let's say I want PDFs from anywhere on the computer. All files from a specific location. I want all the files that are located in the user's downloads folder only. That's all I want to collect. I can set this up to do that. Um, again, specific files from specific locations. I want all the QuickBook and Quicken files from the user profiles only. I can set it to do that. So a lot of different options there. Searching for keywords, searching for hash values. So let's put that together quick here. I've copied my, my search profile. I now want to add my uniqueness. My my uh, uniqueness to this case that I want to zone in on on these specific computers. So let me go into search for files by hash value. So that hash value is that that digital fingerprint. So I'm going to give it the the fingerprints. It's going to look through the computer and see if there's any matching ones on there. Um, so I'm going to put it in a in a category, right? Hash sets and um, not devices. So I'm going to say this is uh, media from other devices. So again, I was saying earlier, if we're going out on site exploitation and we have some information that was found on other devices and we want to see if maybe uh, they're on these, that's what I'm going to do. So I have the media from other devices and over here I can point it to that media, to the, the files that I have. So in here, you can see I have some pictures of US Bridge, it says US Bridges. I need to point it to the directory that has the files in it. I can tell you there are uh, files of US Bridges or pictures of US Bridges uh, in this folder. So I select the folder. It says, okay, there's files in here. We're gonna hash them for you. Give it that digital fingerprint. Do you want us to automatically bookmark or tag this as we find it? So I could put a level, a tag level on it. And then I could put, this is my US Bridges. And these comments here that I put in are fully searchable uh, and, and creates filters for us um, in our analysis portion. So there was nine pictures in there. It, made, it added those hashes to my list. If I have my own list in CSV or, or text, so I just need to change it to look at text. So I have some, um, uh, I'm sorry, I have it in, in CSV, uh, auto tag hash. So I could bring that in. There was three hashes in there. Now I have 12 hashes. Um, and that's good. I, I've added, those are the only hash values I want to look for when we run on that computer. I hit next. We just need to tell the tool, what are those digital fingerprints of? So I have all my file types on this side and I know that they were pictures and videos. So pictures and videos are what I'm adding. Um, how do I wanna identify pictures and videos when I'm looking through this computer? So typically we have what's called thorough identification for all files. And what that does is instead of looking at the file extension, like uh, .jpg, .gif, GIF, .bitmap, BMP, um, instead of looking at that and identifying the file, it looks to the file header. It looks at the data inside of that image. Usually the first few bytes um, tell what type of file it is, tell the computer what type of file it is. And that takes a while. So if you're going to be going on scene and you want speed, um, you wouldn't want to do this. We would save this comprehensive type scan for in-house, uh, for, for back at the lab or when you have a long time. The fastest way is fast identification, which does it only by file extension. So just, it's gonna look for JPEGs, MP4s, GIFs, bitmaps, uh, MP3, whatever type of video, FLV, um, whatever you're looking for, it will look just for that. But then we give you this, it's still fast, it's called thorough identification for files without extensions. So it does a fast identification, looks at the file extensions, when it comes across the file that does not have a file extension, it identifies it by the file header. So still fast, we call it our speed optimized, and it gets you through more, uh, gets you more evidence 
get you more items because it's going to get you stuff from the cache. It's going to get you stuff from apps that maybe do not put file extensions on their files that they save. Um, so uh, that's how we identify the files. Here's embedded. Do I want to look for pictures and videos in archives, zips, rars, tars, so on and so forth? Yes. Do I want to look for pictures in documents, embedded in documents? Absolutely. And a picture DB file. So that's that thumb cache. I want to look in there. So this is your embedded section. And then file source. Where do I want to target my search on this computer? So if we're doing a quick down and dirty, I could go into targeted folders and we give you in here you don't have to create this users and documents and settings if you select those you've now targeted the user profiles on any computer that you're going to run it on um, so you're not going and doing the entire file system you're targeting the user profiles where this evidence generally sits now i said earlier if we're going out on scene and we have not a lot of time but we may have more time. So I'm not sure what it is, but I wanna make sure I get my, my evidence that I'm looking for first, and then if I stay on scene longer, bonus if I get more. So here I target the user folders and then I check entire file system. So it will do the targeted folders first, and then when they're done, it will move outside of the user profiles and do the rest of the file system. Uh, and that's how that works. Files referenced by artifact records. This will go through, and if anything came in through peer-to-peer, -peer, mail, messaging, browser cache, downloads, or has recent file entries, it will link those. So it's doing analysis in the background. It will link all those artifacts to the files that it has located. And we also do deleted, anything that still has reference in the file system, so your recycle bin, orphan, so on. And then I will hit save. And if I come in here, there's my hash sets and there's my media from other devices. Now, I also have some other lists that I brought in earlier. You can see I did bring in the, the U.S. Uh, bridges, um, but there's one here called Suspect Safe. Um, so I'm going to select that one as well. It's already set. So when you bring in a hash set, there's no need for you to bring it in again. Um, we're going to give this search profile. Let's let's go and do keywords first. So new capture. Uh, search for keywords, give it a group name. We're going to put it in keywords, and I'm creating a new group name here. So anytime I bring in my own keyword list, I could put it into that keywords group. Um, I'm just going to give it a unique name, and then a couple different ways for me to bring in my keywords. I could type them in one by one or I can import a CSV or text list. So I'm gonna to go to text here, and you can see I have keyword uh, language text, hit open, and there was three keywords in there, I hit okay. You can see under search expression, there's my first one, foreign language. I believe this is Arabic, um, and I believe it is for the word explosion or bomb. I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to put that in my comments. And then I have peroxide and acetone. I could bring in another list. So I'm going to go back. I know I had another list in here, uh, metadata keywords, bring that in, five more keywords. And you can see, oh, there's an IP address. That's very unique. I'm going to auto tag that. So I have the ability to auto tag it. And this IP address, right? So for my comment, IP address of other device. So now I'm saying, hey, if this IP is found on this device, um, maybe I can say they were in the same location, right? And then you can see, again, supporting the foreign languages. If I knew what each of these words were, I can put the comments for the translation if I wanted it as well. So I put in my keywords. What do I want to search these keywords against, right? So I'm going to select these first two, file and folder names. As I showed you earlier when we do a scan, the first thing our tool does is it makes a listing of every file and folder that's on the computer. As it's making that list, it will run these keywords against it. So if these keywords are the file name or folder name of anything, you're going to know that they were getting hits on it right away. Second thing our tool does is it parses out all the artifacts. 
web browsing history, USB history, all that stuff I was showing you earlier. When it's doing that, it will run these keywords against all those artifact records. So if you have this in any of your web browsing history, it's going to key on that as well. Um, fast, seamless, they don't add time to your scan. Um, so uh, you're, it, it's really good stuff you are going to see. Those are the like low hanging fruit type hits and uh, they show up early. And then our third is, is uh, content and metadata. So what, where do I run, want to run, what files do I want to run these keywords against? And you can see it defaults to documents because yeah, I want to run the keywords against all the documents on the file and maybe the text files. Um, again, how do we identify them? Do I want to look in embedded? And, and where am I going to target? Now remember, if I change this from my other profile, then it's going to throw the whole search profile off. You want to keep it similar to everything else. So if I did targeted folders first and then entire file system, I would do that. Um, keep it similar to the other ones. So you're not adding time on one and not the other. Uh, and then our last choice, what kind of keywords are they? So these are regular keywords that are going to run substring and we can use regular expression keywords. So if you're going to use, bring those in, you just need to tell it I'm um, using regular expression and it defaults to collect anything that has a match. Save. Now, if I look at my keyword category, there's my unique name list. So I just give it a name now, custom Intel profile. I hit next and I have some more options. These options are for when, when I run this profile, um, do I want to add any extra fields? Do I want to have any fields that say agent name, case number, location, you know, whatever fields you want, you can add here. Scan options. So we can skip files, especially if you're going in and want to be fast. You don't want your keyword search bogging down on, on a PDF file, maybe. Maybe it hits a corrupt file and it, and it bogs down and it's taking a long time to run. You can say, hey, if it's taking more than a minute, stop, but collect that file because I do want to see it. Uh, collect anything protected so that if it comes across a password protected file, it will collect that for you. Uh, you can activate BitLocker, but here's the different, here's TG2, right? Run the scans in stealth mode. So if I run this live on somebody else's computer, on the target computer, we leave no traces of a scan or ADF um, what we do is um, anything that says ADF or scan, they get changed to something like Explorer or Command uh, EXE. You know, our parsers, our previews uh, all get you know, changed over to look like system files or, or printer configuration files. So there's no evidence that it was uh, our tool being run on that. A very generic. Uh, very generic items left behind. And you could also set it to start the scan automatically. So if I'm doing a boot scan or a live scan, I just need to start it or boot to it and it will run through the process automatically. So you could put the key in, make sure it's starting and then walk away and everything will run. And we're gonna um, show you that. And you can also whitelist down here. I hit save. My profile is now in my library. There's my custom Intel profile. So I've created my profile. I want to go out and scene. I go to prepare collection key. Second item here. I would select the profiles that I want to bring out. Here's my custom uh, profile. I actually um, already prepared a key with the demo Intel, which is the same uh, profile that we just made. And then I would choose that collection key that I want to take out. Now, very important here, you can see I have other USB devices, my work files uh, in this Apollo um, that have my, my files on it. So I want to make sure I don't select those um, or don't have them attached when I'm doing this process. Um, make sure you know which USB device you're preparing because it is going to format and prepare those drives. Same thing here, if I wanna take, uh, if I'm setting this up for multiple people to go out into the field, um, so I'm the person in charge of creating the profiles and building the keys, 
um, I can plug in four, five, six keys at a time, as long as however many USB devices I have or ports I have, and prepare them all at once. I don't need to do them one at a time. Um, so I click that, I would hit prepare. It then makes this USB device bootable, also the ability to run live on a Windows machine. So with that, when we go out into the field, I am now going to uh, minimize here and plug this U. So I'm on the now. This is you can see a desktop. Um, I'm going to plug that USB device in that was prepared, that collection key, and um, Windows Explorer shows up. So this is the collection key. Um, you can see we had it set for stealth mode. So it doesn't say it's collection key or anything that points back to our tool. It just says local disk. On there is a start.bat. So suspect machine running live, plugged it in. I click on, double click on start. And the program is going to, oh, I've got to shut down my other program here. Hold on one second. Rookie mistake. Target machine, plug in the key, double click on start. Give it permission to run. And you will see here that it's going to auto start in two seconds. Now I could stop that if I want. Um, you're going to see it's going to come in here. It's going to select everything under target devices, the profile, and this is going to auto start here. I'm going to stop that. So I just click somewhere else and it stopped it. Otherwise, we would be in the scan process anyways. What I do want to show you is if collecting RAM is important to you, um, that you can come in and collect your RAM first. Then you can come in to scan computer. In a computer like this one, uh, you may want to pick or choose what profile or what uh, partition, I should say, what partition or what drives you want to select first. So I found the partition I want to scan. I have my custom profile and I'm going to just start with the scan. So again, the first thing the tool is going to do is it's going to uh, make a listing of every file and folder that's on that partition, whether we collect it or not. So if anybody ever says, oh, that's great, look at the information you, you collected, what else was on there, you have that list. You can automatically uh, go right into reporting, save it out into a CSV list and give them that listing um, of everything that was on there and then they can sort through it. You can see it's already getting keyword hits. It's already parsing out the information. As I showed before, USB history is already done. You can see uh, right now it's it's going through and running keywords, I think, against um, some of the uh, videos. So it kind of gives you up on top where it's scanning and what it's doing. Um, I'm now into cl uh, file collection. So it's pulling all pictures and videos under 500 megs from the user profiles. Going through, collecting documents. Um, oh, there's some bridge pictures, right? There's some missile pictures, pretty much getting uh, some idea that my stuff is on here that I'm looking for. Um, if I did not want to um, see what was scanning, I can hide that pane up on top um, so you don't see it, but we're going to keep that there. Anyways, um, I kind of want to let this run a little bit to show you as it's moving some of the visual cues that we're getting. So already I can see that my keyword list, my specific keyword list had uh, some hits. It had 34 hits, but now I've got nine US bridges because I tagged those as level one have been located and six hits on my IP address have been located. So I got that visual cue now that, yep, uh, those are my hash sets. Those are my digital fingerprints, right? I have those now. You can see three pictures of the safe, nine of the bridges, three website on the video. And there, my scan's complete. So that was a scan against a typical user partition uh, on a computer. So I can come in here, go right into my results. 
So let's show you how to put this all together and, and finish it up. Now this could be done on scene or it could be sent off in a standalone viewer or um, backed up onto a laptop and you can move on and do some other um, scans. You can also use this key once this is done to move on to another one. You don't need to reset it. If you wanna run the same scan or you brought out different scans, you can just keep moving along. So nine and two, um, I've got my, my tags. Let me go into my pictures. Uh, one of the things we do is deduplicate images. Um, so you can see up here that, that filters on, I'm going to turn that off for right now. You can see up on top, it brought in the, uh, three pictures that I tagged at level two and the nine images of the, uh, bridges. It has a little red magnifying glass, <clears throat> excuse me, in the upper right hand corner. That signifies that these were hits on either keywords or uh, hashes. And you can see we, we automatically tagged all our hashes. So that's where that comes in. And then I can scan through and see a lot of these other pictures um, that are here. I can filter. I can take and filter my tags out. I don't need to see these, those anymore. So I say, just show me pictures that um, I'm interested in or matches, or <clears throat> I can say, show me pictures with linked artifacts. So if you remember earlier, I said, if it finds a file, it also goes through and see if it matches any of the artifacts. So here I can see I have two values, either browser cache or messages. So I know there's pictures in this gallery that were sent through messaging and I can hit apply. And then it shows me, well, well there you go. There's, there's a map, um, it's a linked artifact and it was through messaging. So if I bring up my details pane, I can come here and see that it's linked to messaging. I can click on that and it's going to take me to the exact message that it was linked to. So you can see here um, the messaging and that's where that picture was sent from. Let me go back and also show you, I can take it to the timeline. So we have a timeline down here. If I click on that last written, it will take me to that comprehensive timeline I talked about earlier um, with all the user artifacts, the records uh, and, and the files all meshed together. Um, so now I can see where this picture is and what was going on. So there's where the message was sent, the file transfer, the message edited, uh, last written time, message sent. And you could see, go back up and forth and see that specific um, point in time. But I can also take this now in my timeline and filter it by uh, activities. You can see all the different activities that are in here. Uh, USBs inserted, principles, recipients, messages sent, all the different um, activities I could sort by, by people, usernames, captures, locations, timestamps, a lot of different ways you can filter and stack. Um, so we went through pictures, just another thing on a lot of the um, uh, filters here. Um, photo probability, we can filter out anything uh, under 70% chance of being an image, such as icons and emojis. Um, you can see out of the 755 pictures that are here, I have filtered out a, a little over 200 of them. So get you to where you're going a little faster. Um, we do photo classification. I'm going to show you that in, in another result. Um, we do entities. I'm going to show you that in another result. And uh, EXIF data. So first generation, if you're looking for those first generation pictures, you know, maybe from an Apple computer, I can come in here and see here's one that has, that came from an Apple, uh, where it's located and all its information down here. So let me just step out of here. Let me just show you this really quick. So I was talking about classifiers. So we have uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence that goes through and classifies your images, your videos, and then we also have entity extraction, um, which I'm going to show you. Uh, but this runs 
right after the scan, it's post scan, um, and it does take some processing power. So if it's something you don't want right away, you can pause it um, and then get your processing power back while you do your analysis or let it run overnight or later when you back it up to a machine. So let me go into one that has that done already. Um, let's close this down, open up the desktop version. You'll see I, I was doing the analysis on the suspect machine and uh, now we're gonna go back to the desktop I just have to open up the right tool. When you open up the desktop version and plug in your collection key, it will ask you if you want to back up the results that are on that key. Typically, you're going to say yes. You can say no if you don't want to back them up at this time and you want to go right into reviewing. You can review them from the key and then back them up uh, when it's convenient for you it will always nag you to back them up and it also tells you here if they have not been backed up. So I'm gonna go into these results again. You can see here I had some items tagged. Um, my level ones were the US bridges so I can come in here and look at those. Um, I can come back in here. My level twos in this scan I had set for the safe pictures. So you can see that, and I also had some bomb pictures in here. Um, I was talking to you earlier in the gallery when filtering, all right, I can filter by um, what was sent by messaging, recent files, emails, browser cache. So this one has emails in it. I can apply that and there's some email attachments. Photo probability I talked about, but here's classification. The classification has been done on this already. So if I was looking for weapons, I can apply that and it will sort the pictures. Uh, it's at 85% that we have it set on. It's a high level, um, but you can also change those levels here if you think it may get you some more results. Um, so those filters easily turned on and turned off. Um, Oh, I did weapons again, vehicle, apply. So now I have pictures of vehicles, um, portrait. Here's one that may be, you know, your intelligence, who's been on this computer, who am I looking for? Um, awesome stuff right there. Turn off the filter, visual class. Uh, entities, I didn't do it on this one. We're going to move to another one. And again, your first generation, you know, if you got a camera on scene or, uh, phones you can definitely go through and grab that information videos let me move on i'm taking too much time here uh, here's our videos you can see the yellow that's the keyword hits that we were on so i could say some of those videos had those keywords in it and under my comments you can say remember that said explode and bomb uh, we collect frames first frame last frame 48 from in between spaced out gives you a pretty good idea of what's in that video and there's no doubt to me that there's an explosion somewhere in that video um, but the nice thing is it is I can just step through my videos one by one and get a pretty good idea of what's in each one of these videos I can also um, if we've collected it I can also preview it and play it as long as I have the correct uh, video codecs installed on my computer. Here's the keywords. So if I click on my keywords, it tells you where they're found. 16 of the IP address were found in files and another six were found in browser cache. Uh, CCleaner, nice thing about this is you see the tables that they're in. Um, so here I can see there's some CCleaner files, the executable, the folder, and it's also installed. So that may be an issue for me in this case, hide me. So here's a um, anti-forensic tool. Here's a tool um, to hide your IP address when you're going out on the internet. So you can see here that there's nine files showing that it's on here. Uh, application usage has logged it twice. 
there's browser cache, browser history, there's a connection log uh, that shows it's been connected, there's download history, it's installed and it's been searched for. So just by looking at this keyword, I'm getting intelligence without even having to look at, at what's, what's in there. Um, I can tell that that's going to be an issue for me in this case. Um, and then here's all the hits on the other keywords as well. Our timeline, I went over that. Our file listing, this is all files uh, in the case, regardless of whether we collected it or not. And then reporting, um, anything that we've bookmarked or tagged is automatically placed into the report. Um, you can see they're selected here to be into the report, but if I wanted to add my summary page or my operating system information, USB history, so on and so forth, I can just select those and now those become part of my report. HTML, PDF, CSV, VIX data, and standalone viewer. Um, let me step out. We are getting close to the end, but I wanna show you entity extraction. So I'm going to go into another demo here where the uh, entities were already pulled out of um, the document. So we run a scan a bunch of, uh, across a bunch of documents um, that we had in our possession. Uh, I wanted to run some of my keywords against it and also have the entities extracted. So if I go into my documents, and I scroll through here, you can see I have some keyword hits, but I have this Chinese document. So I don't understand that, right? So I can see the properties, I can see these are the excerpts or the, where the keywords were hit and what's around it in the original document. I can see the metadata of the document, I can see the excerpts here, the metadata, uh, and now the entities. So what's the entities? It's, here's the drugs. So you can see all the different drug entities that were pulled out, uh, profession, uh, place, all these different entities were broken out and I can look at it in this document and see where it is. But, but look at the document, right? It's not in Chinese anymore. So if I go over here to my toolbar, here's the original document with all the keyword hits in it. And then here's the gist. So it gives me where that keyword is and it translates around it. So it gives me that really good idea of what's in here. So I think that kind of all makes sense and a little simple, but let's think about all these entities that were pulled out, right? The drug entities, and maybe I'm working a drug case or drug intelligence. I can go to my files listing now and use those entities as a keyword list almost, right? So I didn't run any of these keywords in my case because I wanted to stay away from false positives and things like that. But here it's giving me the ability now to go into my filters, choose entities. And like here I can say um, dirty as I put in the word dirty and here's dirty bomb. So that's one of the entities that was pulled out. I hit apply. And now I'm looking at the document that has that word in it. Um, the metadata, the excerpts, the entities that are in this document. So that's the only one that's in there. And then if I wanted to preview it, I would be able to open that document as well and go through it. So go back. We were talking drugs before, so I could turn this filter off and go into here and uh, I think morphine was in one of those documents. So I start typing it, yep, and there it is, and hit apply, and now I'm back to that Chinese document. Uh, you can see all the different ones that are in here. Uh, turn off that filter. Again, I can go through my entities um, and see what may be of interest. Um, again, so I had dirty bomb before, but now if I go with a bomb, I got pipe bomb, dirty bomb and Bombay. Um, again, it's just this free keyword list that brings you to exactly what you're looking for. Um, and here you can see uh, all the information based on that entity. It pulled me into a document here. and I can see the original. Um, this one didn't need to be, um, 
translated, uh, but I can see that it's definitely something that has to do with explosives. Um, again, I can go to preview and undock that or open it within a viewer on my machine. So entity extraction, stealth mode, um, auto start, running from a key, booting, live scans, reporting, uh, fast, right to what we're looking for, um, mobile. Uh, that's the one thing I didn't really get into too much. You do need the laptop on scene for that. Um, I go into scan devices and images and I can add a phone up here. I pick either Android or iOS. And it tells you here, it walks you through the steps on how to connect that phone and how to, uh, once it's connected, you could choose one of your mobile devices or, or you can uh, customize like before. Just stepping back, I can go into imaging, add a phone over here, add that phone and back it up, and then later come back and go into backups right now backups have to be done backups do take some time but i'm going to show you how to save some time here um, i've made a backup of a ios iphone 7 and this iphone 7 has uh, you know a lot of messaging on it but it has a lot of other stuff on it too it, it, it's it's loaded but i'm interested in messaging only um, i would be able to create a profile that just targets the communications or just targets the messaging and pulls it out. So a typical scan on this may be, you know, it takes me 20 minutes to back up that phone. If I do a comprehensive scan, maybe it's another 20, 30 minutes. All right, so there's 50 minutes. The backup we can't get around, that has to be done. So it took 20 minutes to back up the phone. I could pull out that communication data in 16 seconds and, and put that in a standalone viewer to hand off to somebody else to start going through it in another 30 seconds. So 20 minutes to back it up, uh, less than a minute to extract the communication information, put it into a standalone viewer and have it in somebody else's hands. And then I can go back and do, because I have the backup, I can go back and do that comprehensive at any time. Um, with that, let me step back into uh, here for a minute. I want to kind of wrap up and give you a summary. Okay, so in summary, ADF tools, easy to learn. Uh, I've kind of gone over a high level fast today. Um, but with that on our website, we've got quick start guides. Uh, it's also included with each license. Detailed product user guides, tech specs. Uh, we've got webinars. We've got short how-to learning videos. So each one of these little sections that I went over in this hour today, you can have a three or five. How do I bring in keywords? I forgot. Oh, let me go watch the video. How do I bring in hashes? How do I boot? Hey, I have a Surface Pro here. I've never booted one of those. How do I do that? We've got the videos on scene for you to go. Uh, we do have training with this, and you have direct access to our support, support at ADF Solutions, or calling our main number, option three. Um, again, fully integrated artificial intelligence, classify, you know, the faces, weapons, missiles, small arms, all that stuff, entity extraction, a translation of over 200 languages, the gisting, and, you know, we are, we're very proud of the products we develop. Uh, hopefully you can tell by the way I talk about this that it is an exciting uh, product. It's optimized for speed and accuracy. Those linked artifacts, tying the user to that and then looking at the timeline, just really, it's done in the background for you. You could point to a picture and say, oh, look, it came through a download. The users manipulated it and it's saved in a user created folder. Um, reducing all that noise I showed you with the keywords, how you really, you know, taking that uniqueness of your case and putting it together and getting out of it what you want. Uh, Non-technical, you don't need to be uh, super technical to use this tool. You can put it in, in the hands of a non-technical user uh, and it could be handed from person to person, you know, with just a little bit of, hey, just plug this in and let it go. Uh, and and 
you're going to get the information you need. And you always, always have 100% support from our support team. So with that, thank you. If this is something you're interested in, uh, triageg2.com, request your free trial. Um, that's all for today. Thank you for your time and be safe.